All right, so I'm gonna make a quick dog collar um, for my dog, Daisy, today. Um, this isn't anything exciting or revolutionary. There's free dog collar patterns all over the place. So um, this is just how I make them. I made, I, I don't know, a few years back, I thought I'd make dog collars and sell them. Um, I guess it was when we got Daisy, actually, so about three years ago. And I think I only sold a few, but um, this is one of the ones that I had made that I still have just hanging around here. So um, she's too big to fit in this size now and she needs a new collar. So I'm going to make her one that's something nice and summery. Um, so what you'll need is um, for the fabric, I measured around her neck, which is about 20 inches. Um, and then I cut it six inches longer so that I have some additional to make it adjustable and to um, have the extra material that's needed to fold to the back um, and around the different hardware pieces. So I cut this to 26 inches. I have, a, and that's four inches wide. So for a one inch wide collar, you wanna cut a four inch wide piece. If you have a smaller dog and you only want a half inch wide collar, um, then you would cut your piece two inches wide by the length that you need. Um, so I would just add the like six inches to that. I have here a strip of one inch wide webbing. Um, you can use nylon webbing. This is polypropylene webbing that I bought on Amazon actually uh, in 2018 when I just looked. So I don't know if this exact one it said is no longer available, but it's like a seat belt webbing. So it's very strong. So she's not going to break that. Um, and then... I have one inch wide um, clips for the collar, a one inch wide adjustable slider. These I also bought off of Amazon. And then I have a one inch D ring, which this is just whatever I have out of my um, bag making hardware. So first step, um, I took my strip of fabric and this is just a quilting cotton and I ironed directly down the center of it, a two inch wide strip of um, fusible woven interfacing. So this is Shapeflex SF 101 by Pellon. And I didn't interface the whole piece because with the webbing inside, it can get pretty thick. Um, so I just put the two inch strip down the center so that the parts that are on the outside um, will be interfaced. So right now I'm going to press this and what I'm going to do is fold each end under by half an inch and press that flat. And then with that still pressed, I'm going to fold this in half to find the center, open it up and fold each long edge into the center and then fold in half and do a final press so that I have a one inch wide strip um, and both ends will be folded under by half an inch. All right, so I have my strap folded. Each end is folded under by half an inch, um, folded in half, folded each long raw edge into the center, and then folded in half at that first crease so that it's one inch wide. And now it measures 25 inches long. Um, so what I'm going to do now is actually open this up and I'm going to slide the webbing in to one side um, under that half inch fold at the end and then all the way down into this one fold. And I cut my webbing at 25 inches um, so that it would be the correct length to fold in here. If I need to trim it a little bit, I will. And then just fold my strap back up with the webbing inside of it. Um, and with the webbing being black, it may show through your fabric a little bit. So if you want to sew everything so that that side is the side that goes against the dog's neck, then that's fine. I'm going to place a couple clips along this as I get it folded in there nicely, just to hold everything in place. And this is where I find it um, helpful to use a thinner webbing, such as this poly 
propylene webbing. Um, and I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to sew everything this way so that the part with the webbing is actually on the outside, um, just because it's easier for me. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing fabrics, if you choose a dark fabric or a dark, yeah, a darker fabric will conceal the webbing more, or you could buy probably a white webbing instead of black. This is just what I have. All right, so that's all clipped inside. I'm going to sew all the way around this now. So I'm just going to start at one end. And I'm just using um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I have my sewing machine set to a four and a half millimeter stitch length. Um, and I'm using a polyester thread because cotton thread is not very strong. So I wouldn't recommend using a cotton thread on this um, just because it would have a, a bigger chance that it might snap. So. Alright, so I just gave that another um, quick press with everything sewn together to make sure everything's nice and flat. Um, so the first step, what we'll do is take the adjustable slider. My right side is facing down. So the side that I want to be on the outside is what is facing down. I'm going to slide, slide the strap up into the um, slider and then over the center and back down. So when you pull it back through the other side and you'll pull it through um, about an inch or so. And I'm just going to sew now as close to the slider as I can get. And I'm kind of going to sew a box here with an X in it um, so that it has the added strength. Um, from sewing that box stitch. So I sewed straight across and now I'm sewing up one side. And now when I get to that corner, I'm going to sew down to the other corner. I'm going to stop directly on the stitching, the previous stitching. I'm going to sew for along that first line again. To reinforce that and then I'm going to sew from that bottom corner up to this top corner and then I'm sewing across the end and 
And thankfully, if you're not super neat on this, I don't think the dog will mind. All right, and then I'm going to just back stitch along that line and stitch again. All right, and you can see the box that I sewed on the back. So now I'm going to take this strap back. Nope. First I want to place half of my, uh, my clip on this. And these are also, also adjustable. So I'm sliding it. There's a bar in here. I'm sliding it over that bar and then back down on the other side of it. So it's like this and then slide it up over the bar on the adjuster again over the fabric that's already there okay so I just looped it over and then bring it back down through the other side and you can buy wider adjusters also if you want um, to make that easier to adjust so right now, just make sure that everything is adjustable, that this slides correctly and that that slides correctly. It can get bigger and smaller. All right, and then next we have to slide. I'm going to just slide my D-ring on. I'm not sewing that down yet. And then you want your um, other end of your buckle to be right side up and slide slide the uh, fabric over the end of that buckle. So just like that. And I have um, about an inch, it's about an inch and a half that I have from the end of the fabric to the end of the buckle here. So I'm just going to sew right now as close as I can to the end of this buckle. Just one line and I'll backstitch well there. All right, and now I'm going to slide the D-ring down all the way to that stitching. And I have a, about an inch of a fabric beyond that. So now I'm going to top stitch as close as I can get to that D-ring on the other side of it. And I'll back stitch there. And then I'm just going to sew another um, X stitch here, similar to what we did to attach the um, slider. So I'm just sewing from the bottom corner to the other corner, which I can see where that is underneath. I'm going to sew directly across. And you can mark this also with um, like an erasable fabric marking pen or something to better find your lines. Um, and then I'm just sewing from that corner to this other corner. And I'm going to give this one more um, because the leash might be in here. I'm going to just go now all the way around the box. Not sewing back over the X again, but just to give it a little extra. And that's it. So super easy project. Um, I'm not going to guarantee that your dog won't break this because they might, they might break it. Um, if you have like a super small dog that you're not worried about them breaking their leash, you could probably skip the webbing, in which case I would interface the entire fabric piece. Um, so there's her new leash. And yeah, I would go with measuring, measure your dog's neck. Let's see. Hers was about 20 inches, so this should fit her with only about that much extra to spare, and that's when I measured it. I added six inches to it, so you might want to add eight inches to make it a little bit more. Um, if your dog is really small, 
you might want to add less than that. I think six inches though gives you enough room to have it be somewhat adjustable and to have the extra fabric you need to sew up around um, the hardware. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you make some dog collars for your dog. Thank you for watching.